excuse me, little dog. All right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where, good Lord, is it already Thursday, what would that be, Thursday, January 13th, 2022, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the middle of the oasis of freedom and uh, I have to get my big chop saw on a stick to start doing some weeding of the Amazon rainforest down here in Florida but before I do <clears throat> it's been a couple of weeks since we've checked in with our old friends over at oilprice.com those fossil fuel investors uh, with an honest well, from the perspective of fossil fuel investors, which I find to be uh, probably the most honest reporting about the fossil fuel uh, news and the energy transition. So we're going to look at a lot of stories about how the U.S. and the rest of the world are transitioning away <clears throat> from fossil fuels get a little bit of a reality check and I'm gonna put this little dog down so he can go sunbathe and uh, but before we get into the actual <coughs> oil drilling roundup uh, just got a chuckle out of this story for all of the uh, Hopium addicts talking about carbon capture and storage. The famous CCS that is just, uh, you know, there's two kinds. This isn't so much the sucking it out of the air, this is just trying to keep it from ever going into the air. So, this is the track record so far, at least here in this country. The U.S. spent $1.1 billion on failed carbon capture projects in a decade. Yes. <clears throat> the U.S. Department of Energy has spent $1.1 billion, and I'm assuming this is taxpayers' money, on 11 carbon capture projects at coal-fired power plants and industrial facilities since 2009, most of which turned out to be failures and were never even built. The U.S. Government Accountability Office, there's a real contradiction in terms, the U.S. Government Accountability Office said in a recent report, the Department of Energy provided about eight is that a six or an eight? Six hundred eighty-four million dollars to eight projects for carbon capture at coal plants, only one of which resulted in an operational facility. Three projects, including two prior to receiving funding, were withdrawn and one was actually built and entered operations, but halted those operations in 2020 due to changing economic conditions. The DOE, the Department of Energy, terminated funding agreements with the other four projects prior to their construction. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, I think we're getting a, uh, <laughs> a good idea. Uh, the only operational large-scale U.S. carbon capture project at a coal plant, the Petra Nova project, was idled in 2020. There you go. There is a real success rate. Uh, we can all see how carbon capture and storage 
is uh, going to save the planet by that the 10 year review of the overwhelming success rate of carbon capture and storage and I can only imagine uh, and that's the easy one all right that's the one that maybe had a chance that we're not talking about sucking the shit out of the air that's another uh, knee slapper for another day but right now let's just go look at how well the world is you know transitioning away from fossil fuels and we're mainly going to look at oil this is oilprice.com uh, so obviously many stories about uh, how much oil is being left in the ground you know the leave it in the ground charge as all of these countries uh, talking about transitioning off of fossil fuels okay wow oil demand exceeds IEA expectations that's the International Energy Agency probably the most well-known forecaster the most well-known you know energy forecaster you know looking ahead trying to figure out where uh, these different kinds of energy are going to play out oil demand exceeds IEA expectations yes uh, global oil demand has proven to be more resilient to the effects of the Omicron variant spread than the International Energy Agency expected according to its chief I love the name Faith Byroll who spoke to media blah 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 quote demand dynamics are stronger than many of the market observers had thought mainly due to the milder Omicron expectations Byroll said yes uh, then she uh, talks about uh, various supply crunch uh, the IEA forecast that global fuel consumption will decline considerably during this quarter because of pandemic related restrictions but it seems that the actual restrictions are not having such a grave effect on it yes uh, the demand for road transport fuels will remain strong even amid the latest surge in infections yep 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 uh, the IEA forecast global oil demand to have grown by 5.4 million barrels per day in 2021 uh, with the total returning to pre-pandemic levels of just shy of 100 million barrels per day and there you go but uh so that was so the iea was a little bit uh missed its predictions for the last quarter so let's see how it does looking ahead to 2023 US oil predict production to hit new record in 2023 yes the IEA believes US oil production will break new records next year U.S. crude oil production is set to exceed 
pre-pandemic levels next year driven by a jump in shale output as higher prices incentivize producers to drill more oil wells to offset decline rates the Energy Information Administration says America's crude oil production is set to average 12.4 million barrels per day next year. The IEA said uh, in its um, energy outlook in which it revealed its first estimates for 2023. Um, output last year, meaning 2021, was 1.1 million barrels below the annual record of 12.3 million barrels per day from 2019. Uh, this year, the annual average U.S. crude oil production is set to grow to 11.8 million barrels per day. And then next year, the record annual average from 2019 will be exceeded, the EIA says, expecting 12.4 million barrels per day in 2023. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, okay, and all of these stories go on. Uh, we're going to go over to Norway. You know, Norway, uh, Norway is often uh, shown up, as, held up as a poster child for saving the planet. Norway is determined to boost oil discoveries. Norway's oil majors, as well as the country's government, and oil regulators, yeah, hope to get every last drop out of the North Sea before global demand eventually wanes. Continuing with its plan to run low carbon oil operations worldwide for decades to come, while also focusing on developing its clean energy sector, Norway is making more oil discoveries and expects to maintain or even increase its oil output so long as demand remains high. Yes, in December, Equinor announced it would be drilling around 25 exploration wells in Norwegian waters throughout 2022 in a bid to find more oil. The oil major intends to continue drilling for crude in Europe's biggest oil and gas producing country as some other companies transition away from fossil fuels. Yep. Jez Averby, Equinor's senior vice president, <clears throat> stated of the major's strategy, quote, our plan basically is to make sure that the Norwegian continental shelf has the last drops, the last molecules to survive in that competition. Close quote. Uh, despite the potential for Norway to be a leader in the move away from oil and gas, Thanks to its existing 
oil wealth and early adoption of renewable energy technologies, the government continues to back fossil fuels. It is one of the European countries along with Russia that has supported the rest of the continent by supplying natural gas during a time of severe shortages. Uh, yep, yep. Anyway, from Norway, of course, let's do not leave China out of the mix. China oil major targets record high oil production this decade. China National Offshore Oil Corporation is planning to boost its 2022 oil and gas production by 10% compared to last year's goal as it plans 13 new projects to come on stream and drill 360 new exploration wells this year and continue raising its output to record levels this decade. CNOCC set its production target of 600 million to 610 million barrels of oil equivalent for 2022, up from last year's target of 550 million barrels of oil. Yep, yep. Um, in 22, CNOOC expects China to account for 69% of its net production and projects outside China to make up the remaining 31%. Uh, it plans to continue raising its production in the following years to reach up to 600 90 million barrels of oil in 2024. There you go. From the U.S. to Norway to China, you see uh, how all of these uh, countries all over the planet are falling all over themselves to uh, reduce their uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, speaking of uh, of which I, I mentioned this story on Monday this is oilprice.com speaking of emissions US emissions jumped in 2021 as coal power generation surged. U.S. economy-wide emissions jumped last year from the low levels in 2020 due to the corona panic lockdowns largely because of soaring coal-fired power generation in America. It's an independent rhodium group. U.S. Grand U.S. greenhouse gas emissions surged by 6.2% in 2021 compared to 2020, Rhodium Group said in its preliminary estimates, which put the United States further off track to achieve the Biden administration's climate goals. But uh, don't worry, uh, anybody who thinks that uh, the U.S. is only ramping up oil and coal. How about U.S. ramps up battery production with 13 new gigafactories? Yes. Uh, 
Um, 13 new battery cell gigafactories are expected to come online in the U.S. by 2025. The next decade will be defined by a massive increase in utility scale storage. GM, Ford, Tesla, SK Innovations, and LG Energy are among the builders of the new gigafactories. Yes. Um, one of these uh, analysts has forecast that annual electric vehicle sales will approach 30 million vehicles globally by 2030. That means that the world will need a massive ramp up in electric battery production. Indeed, the Department of Energy says the worldwide lithium battery market is expected to grow five to ten times in the next decade, meaning 13 new battery cell gigafactories are expected to come online in this country by 2025. There you go. And we don't need to get into a rant about lithium couple of uh, odds and ends to round out. Uh, this is breaking news. Breaking news at this moment. 19-year-old hacks in to 25 Teslas simultaneously. A 19-year-old German IT student and hacker said in a series of tweets that he had managed to gain remote control over more than 25 Teslas in 13 different countries without the knowledge of their owners. Yes. Uh, the hacker, David Colombo, said the vulnerability he had exploited was not the fault of Tesla. The vulnerability was in third-party software used by the car's owners. Um, quote, I now can remotely run commands on t more than 25 Teslas in 13 countries without the owner's knowledge, Colombo tweeted. Uh, Anyway, uh, what's he able to do? I don't know what the sentry mode is. He can disable the sentry mode. He can open the doors and windows. He can start keyless driving. He could also obviously find the exact location of the vehicle. Uh, This should not happen, Colombo said, especially if we're putting cars on the internet and trying to make them secure. Uh, the hackability problem with electric vehicles is getting nowhere near enough attention. Yes. UK cybersecurity experts have also warned about vulnerability in home and public EV chargers. Uh, yep, yep, yep. But we're going to wind up with some advice. How to lower your energy bill. How to lower 
your energy bill. Cuddle, cuddle your pet to lower your energy bill. There you go. Uh, if you can't find a, a human to cuddle, what does Johnny Cash says? A dog is man's best friend if he can find nothing else. Europe might be in the midst of an energy crisis, but one UK energy supplier has a potential solution. Cuddle your pet for warmth. Yes, uh, Ovo Energy, one of the largest energy suppliers in the UK, apologized on Tuesday for a now deleted blog post in which it advises customers of one of its companies to, quote, have a cuddle with your pet to stay warm. Yes. Uh, Ovo sent a link uh, advising its customers to do star jumps. I have no idea what a star jump is. Cuddle their pets and leave the oven open after they have finished cooking to find extra heat. Yes the skyrocketing energy prices in Europe and the UK have made fuel and energy bills much more expensive for UK households. So there you go. Uh, I think that is a fine suggestion. Cuddle your pet to stay warm. But anyway, uh, I am going to stop cuddling my pet because it's 72 degrees and uh, we need to go crank up the uh, gas sucking chop saw on a stick and head out into the waters as the uh, Sandhill cranes approach. Not sure the Sandhill cranes are going to appreciate my chopping the water lilies down while I still can. I highly suggest you cuddle your little dog while you still can. Bye guys. Oh, Jesus.